If you're creating projects with Cursor, how do you know that those projects and the code being generated is secure? One of the best ways to do this is to use a platform like Stackhawk to test that code and then iteratively push that feedback back into Cursor to improve the security posture of the application. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know to get Stackhawk set up and running with your Vibe coded or AI generated coding projects so that you can begin coding more securely with Cursor. Let's get started. All right, so I've got a project set up here called Cursor API Test, which is just a relatively simple Node.js and Express API project. I actually used Cursor to create this, but in all fairness, full disclosure, I did ask it to put in a vulnerability for SQL injection. This is just to demonstrate how you would potentially look for these vulnerabilities in a code base. It's not saying that Cursor would directly do this. However, if you prompt things in a certain way, you may end up with vulnerabilities and the chances of having some medium to low severity vulnerabilities is actually quite high within Vibe coded projects. So if I run this right now, it's going to have a SQL injection vulnerability. How would I actually know about that aside from just going into the code itself? Well, that's where I'm gonna use Stackhawk to do this. What it will actually do is test those API endpoints for potential vulnerabilities and then let me know. And then I'm going to feed that data back into Cursor and that is going to allow me to fix the project, retest it and make sure that it's secure. So if I come over to Stackhawk, I've already logged in. If you don't have an account, in the description, I'll put a link so that if you wanna sign up and try it out for yourself, you can. Also be on the lookout, there is going to be a Vibe coding subscription that's coming out relatively shortly. So stay tuned for that as well. But if you sign up for the general trial right now, you're going to come into this interface. Then if you go to applications, you can set it up with GitHub, Azure repos, Bitbucket or GitLab, but today I'm actually gonna do this manually. It's a little bit easier to set up from a demo perspective. So I'm gonna click start scanning. If you haven't set any of the Stackhawk stuff up before, you're going to come to this get started modal where you're gonna be able to download it for your operating system and then install it. If you're looking to install this in CI CD, you can also do that as well and go to the downloads page here. Then what you'll do after you've downloaded it and installed it, you'll then do hawk init, and then it's gonna ask you for your API key, and you can grab that API key from your profile settings right here. Once you've got that working, then the next thing is to come into the app details. Let's call this one my AI app. I will then set this up to be a production app. Then we have a URL for our app, which is where our endpoints are going to live. I have this currently running, I believe, on port 3000. So let me grab this here and toss this in right there. Then we'll do application type. And Stackhawk supports quite a few different application types. You could do um, dynamic or single page application here, static site, API, or anything else, you don't even have to put it in there. We'll be able to actually scan it with the Stackhawk Hawk scan. But I'm gonna actually pick API here. I'm then gonna set this up as a REST API. And then what you also will see is that it's going to use my open API spec to figure out what routes are in the application so that it can scan them correctly. You don't have to do this, but I would highly suggest it as it makes it a lot more configurable, especially when you're dealing with API endpoints. Now you can either do this through a URL path. So if you are serving your open API spec on an endpoint, you can do that, or you can do file path here. And this will be based off of where your stackhawk.yml is running or essentially where you're going to be running your stackhawk CLI. I'm actually going to be slash API spec and then openapi.yaml. So I'll be api spec slash, and then openapi.yaml. And then I'll click create app. 
as you can see, our application got created there. And then what we need to do is actually add our stackhawk.yml into the project. So you can either download it or copy it. And as you'll see in mine, I've already got one sitting here, but I'm gonna overwrite this, paste in this new one. This will contain my application ID, my environment, my host, where my open API conf is. And then from there, I can run my first scan. So I'll click copy and then open up a new terminal. Now I'm gonna have a problem here. I just save, the, make sure you save your stackhawk.yml and I'll run hawk scan. And you can see it's parsing the configuration file, making sure that I actually have access to stackhawk, but it's going to run into an issue here that's pretty common, which is unable to access HTTPS colon slash slash localhost 3000. That is because I am running on HTTP, not HTTPS. So if you come into your stackhawk.yml, if you are running on HTTPS, perfectly fine, you can leave it, but you can change this so that your host is HTTP if you're running on HTTP, and then your scan will work correctly. Okay, and we can see here that Stackhawk has picked up a NoSQL injection vulnerability within our code, as well as some of these other ones. Now, in the spirit of vibe coding, let's actually take this input about our security issues, open up our chat here. Let's fix the following issues based on some of the security scan findings from Stackhawk. And when I pasted it, you can actually see that it is highlighting line 127 to 178 of the terminal output here. So let's run this. SQL injection, CSP, click jacking. Let's see what it'll do to fix this up. So here we can see the plan, fix SQL injection, add security headers, remove or modify. And let's let it do its thing here, do accept. Now let's restart our application here and let's run another scan of this. Now, if I wanna see more details on this, I can actually click at the bottom of this output, do open, and I can see a more detailed and UI friendly report. So we can see SQL injection, we've got two CSP and some other ones here. If I click on these, it'll actually take me to a remediation. It'll tell me a bit more about it. And on top of that, it'll also tell me the routes that are affected. So user slash zero and you, uh, vulnerable slash user slash zero. Now, since we've already had cursor fix that, now what we wanna do is we wanna rescan this. Now, of course we could run Hawk scan again, but that's going to give us a new scan. We wanna keep this scan live so that we can see the progress that we're making as we improve that code base. So we'll do copy to clipboard, close, then I'm going to stick that in my terminal here. And let's see if Cursor was able to fix some of these vulnerabilities. All right, and now that we've re-scanned it, we can actually see that the vulnerable endpoint has been fixed. Now, we still have a couple of medium severity issues here that we can continue to iterate with, with Cursor on to fix. However, our two main high criticality SQL injection issues are fixed now. So as you can see, if we click down here and I open this up again, we'll now see that our NoSQL injection has been fixed. And then we can continue to iterate on these ones here. Now, this isn't to say that every generated application is going to be vulnerable, however, this is a great way that you can check to make sure that things are secure and then use the feedback from this to feed it back into Cursor or any of your other agentic coding tools that you're using and let it fix it on its own. So with that, now you can see the best way to create secure vibe coded projects with Stackhawk.
For more information on how you can get started with Stackhawk, you can go to www.stackhawk.com. Until next time, happy coding.